Okay, now we'll talk about derivatives of inverse functions. And I'll start with a quick review of inverse functions and the main concepts about inverse functions that you need to know. And then we'll get into the calculus of inverse functions. Okay, so first, inverse functions and some of the main uh, concepts dealing with inverse functions. One of the things you should know is that as a general rule, switching the x and y coordinates results in a reflection across the line y equals x. So if we have this line, y equals x, we can always generate a reflection across that line. Let's just do a simple point here. If I have the point 4, 2, right there, and I switch the x and y coordinates. So instead of 4, 2, I have the point 2, 4. Well, that's going to be here. So that's the point 2, 4. And what I'm saying is that one of these points is a reflection of the other across this line. So in other words, if you go straight to this line and then keep going same distance, same, same direction, you get to the other point. Or another way to say it is that this little segment has this line as its perpendicular bisector. But we get from one point to directly across that line, the other point, just by switching the x and y coordinates. One other example. Let's look at the point 1, comma, negative 5 right down there. Well, if we switch the x and y coordinates, instead of 1, comma, negative 5, we get negative 5, 1, which is right there. And again, those two points are a reflection of each other across the line y equals x. And that happens every time if we simply switch the x and y coordinates. Now, this can also apply to functions. If we have some function, and we call it f, function f, then the inverse of function f, we have a notation. The inverse of f is referred to as f inverse, like that. And this little notation here is not an exponent, which is an, an unfortunate notation, because it looks like an exponent. But that does not mean 1 over f. That is not a negative exponent right there. This is just to take, take this as a whole. That is f inverse. And the inverse of f will be a reflection across the line y equals x. So once again, if we have this line y equals x, and we have a function. Let's take a, take a look at the exponential function. Okay, so this is y equals e to the x. Well, a ref, that's the, the base e exponential function. If we reflect that across the line y equals x, we get a, a graph that looks something like this. Okay, and that, the inverse, that is y equals natural log of x. The inverse of the base e exponential function is the base e log function. Okay, and you might know that um, y equals ln x is the same. This mathematically is equivalent to saying x is equal to e to the y. So instead of y equals e to the x, we've switched the x and y. And now we have x equals e to the y, which is mathematically the same as that. And any point on this curve, if you take any point and reflect it across this line, you'll get to a corresponding point on the other curve. The entire curve, in this case, is a reflection across the line y equals x of the other curve. Or the other way around, this curve is a reflection of that one. And you get there by switching the x and y's. But a function and its inverse will always be a reflection across that line. Let's look at a couple of other specific examples. Look at the function y equals x squared. Now draw it in your notes like this. y equals x squared. Let's just draw in the other half with a dotted line here. I'll tell you why in just a second. What happens if we reflect that across the line y equals x? Well, we get a curve that looks something like this. Let me switch colors here for the reflection. OK. So this curve, y equals x squared, reflected across the line y equals x, is going to be that curve. And you might see that this is the curve x equals y squared. Okay, and the reason I drew part of it with a, a dashed line here is because we usually restrict our domain. In this case, 
uh, we only look at half the parabola and so when we reflect it we just look at half of the sideways parabola and that way the the function and its inverse are both functions you can see if we took this entire parabola and reflected it to get this we result in a we we end up with a curve that fails the vertical line test so if we only look at half the parabola then when we reflect it across the line y equals x we still get something that can be mathematically considered a function it will still pass the vertical line test or there's only one y value for a given x value so we typically instead of looking at the whole curve we restrict our domain just look at x values in this case x values greater than or equal to zero so we restrict the domain such that the inverse is also a function a similar example would be the the sine function look at this y equals sine x let's draw it something like this that's y equals sine x and if we reflect this across the line y equals x the reflection is going to look like this hold on okay and that would be the equation x equals sine y which you can probably see is equivalent to y equals the inverse sine of x y equals inverse sine of x or x equals sine y those are the same these these curves of course can continue on indefinitely and one is a reflection of the other now in when we actually deal with these functions we would typically restrict our doma domain to just a tiny little section of the sine curve from here to here so this little piece I'll highlight it in red from here up to there from from this trough right here to that peak right there if we just look at that section of the curve then when we invert it we would be looking at this piece this section of the inverse sign which would still be a function that would still pass a vertical line test but if you graph the entire curve and reflect it you get that x equals sine y and y equals sine x